Hey, what's up guys? So if you've been watching my videos for quite a few weeks, months, years, or whatever, you've probably heard me use certain words over and over again. And one word that you probably heard me use most recently in a repetitive fashion is ritual. <clears throat> the reason why I use the, the, the term ritual as a substitute for habit is because there's something a bit more powerful to the rituals in your life. Whether you know you're doing ritual, performing rituals or not, um, if you're cognizant of it and you can infuse your habits with ritual power, it takes things to another level. So what am I talking about? The difference between a habit and a ritual is as simple as looking at the things that you do every day without having to think about it. Habits are things that you do without having to think about it. So when you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you probably don't think about it. You probably just wake up, get to the bathroom, brush your teeth. Um, habits are things that you have trained yourself to do or others have trained you to do without you having to think about it. It could also be as simple as getting in your car, right? When you get in your car, you've got a motor engram from your head to your hand that automatically jams that key in, turns the ignition. That's a simple one, but you recognize uh, when it's not properly accessed, when you get into like a new car, right? You get into a new car, you have to look for the keyhole, so on and so forth. So it goes from being something that's um, novel and new to something that becomes habit, habitual. You just do it over and over again. It becomes a ritual when you infuse it with conscious power. So some things that, uh, it, well, you can really, you can really infuse anything with conscious power and make it a ritual. Uh, things as simple as being completely focused and present with your meal when you're eating. A lot of people set the stage by, or set the tone by saying a prayer of gratitude or grace uh, before they eat. This turns your eating, this turns your habits of eating. Most people eat completely unconsciously. You know, we just, we're just stuffing food in our mouth, driving, eating fast food and shit. But if you pause for a moment, just pause for a moment and offer 10 seconds of gratitude. Thank you to the animal that you're eating. Thank you to the soil for producing the plants that you're eating. Thank you for, to, towards whatever you want to offer gratitude for the nourishment that you're about to get, your meal becomes a ritual. The powerful thing about being fully, fully present and concentrating all your mental and spiritual effort on an activity like eating or any other mundane activity is that you become more fully aligned with the energies available from the activity. It goes from being a rote activity to something that produces more than just, like when you eat, it produces more than just nutrition for your body, but it enlivens your spirit, right? When you put that food in your mouth and you're thinking about the, the, the gratitude, you're holding gratitude with you while you're eating that food or you're drinking that water, you've turned that simple act into a spiritual act. You've turned something from profane into sacred. A lot of these ideas come from a book, in fact, called uh, Sacred and Profane by Mercer Eliade, if you're interested in these types of ideas. So look at your life. Look at when you're making love to your woman, for example. I mean, there's an entire practice associated with bringing spirituality, bringing focus and concentration, turning your sexual act, turning your love making into art, turning into prayer, turning into spirituality. They call this Tantra. So, you know, a lot of people, their their relationships grow pretty boring, especially their sexual relationships get pretty boring because, you know, sex becomes a habit, you know, every night or every other night or whatever your habit is. It's like, you know, you go and you poke your girl. What I'm inviting you to consider is to turn your love act into an act of prayer by ritualizing it. So you would do things like perhaps light candles, uh, turn on music, uh, clean the sheets, take a shower. These are all ways to prepare your mind, prepare your spirit, and pre prepare your body for the thing you're about to do. You're going to go make love 
man, we want to be fully present. We want to get the most out of it. We want the experience to transform us, not just our body, right? We bust a nut, but actually to walk away feeling invigorated, enlivened, like you've added something to the world. You've added something to yourself and you've contributed to the, to the blossoming of your woman's energy when you make love to her. And of course, everyday things that we do can be ritualized and infused with spiritual power just by being conscious of it. So I remember when I was in high school and I was never really a good student, but I was a really good athlete. And I loved strength training and, uh, and I took good care of my body. It became the thing that I centered all my discipline around. You know, school was kind of the thing that I had to do. Training and taking care of my body is the thing I wanted to do. But I started doing really well in school when I began ritualizing the healthful practices associated with studying and doing my homework. What do I mean by that? Before I would engage in my homework practice, I would ritualistically go into my kitchen, fill up a big cup with ice, fill it up with water, set it by my next to my books, I lay everything out, take a few breaths, and then begin working. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I quickly realized that, uh, that I started falling out of good patterns when I stopped filling up my healthful glass of water, my healthful cup of water, and doing a deep breathing, taking a deep breathing moment before doing my homework. I hated homework. But because I ritualized it, I was able to get myself into the flow, into the energy, into the frequency of getting that thing done and enjoying it, letting it become uh, a gift. So, so, so of course, we can turn our entire lives into a sacred experience. We can turn our every profane moment into a ritual. We can turn everything that we do which seems mundane, boring, and rote into an act of prayer if we infuse it with our full consciousness, intention, and love. A Japanese tea party or a tea ceremony, which I had the luck, the, the, the joy of participating in. In fact, my daughters and wife, when we were in England, they did a uh, they went to a tea party, an English tea party. Interesting that the East and West both have versions of a tea party which require, now tea, a tea party ain't just a tea party if you've been in Japan or England. It ain't just we sit, sitting down and, and pouring some tea, at least you know the experiences I've had and traditionally. It's a big to-do. I mean, every with a Jack, Japanese tea party, every moment, every movement, every where you set the cup, how you pour the thing, how you toast it, how you sip it, the whole fucking thing is infused with full consciousness. It's like a prayer in motion. It's like yoga. Tea parties, brushing your teeth, eating your meals, and making love to your woman will bring 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times more power and joy to your life if you infuse it with the power of ritual done.